Hey guys, thanks for joining us at Golden State Gaming Network. With me is Joe Cannon. He is the founder for a Kickstarter uh, for a game called uh, Migration. Now, is, is this a tile-based board game or... Actually, I'm going to let him go into it and just tell you a little bit about it before I do that. <laughs> uh, all right, thanks a lot for having me, Billy. Um, Migration is a uh, story-heavy kind of an area control game where you know, you have a series of characters and you're placing them on the board uh, on these hexagonal spaces and each piece kind of creates a new rule or, or breaks a rule and so there's strategy in where you place the pieces as well as which piece you select. Uh, as you play, you're going to be competing for space and resources and trying to anticipate uh, the moves of the other players. It ends up playing a lot like uh, chess. Uh, people have compared it also to Small World or Hive but it's really its own uh, unique game that brings something really special to the table. Okay, uh, and when you decided to bring this to Kickstarter, um, what, was that your first intention when you first designed the game, was to go through Kickstarter and kind of get it crowdfunded that way, or had you tried to approach game developers and, and producers separately? Uh, that's a great question. Um, my, my first idea with Kickstarter, or with, with Migration, was to uh, just create something that I liked. I've been poking around with game design materials for a few years, and uh, I ended up liking this, and other people liked it, so uh, I, I started developing it. At first, I wanted to develop it for mobile, <clears throat> uh, but that didn't end up uh, working out. So uh, when I found the Game Crafter, that's when things really started picking up. Um, after the Game Crafter, I, I did pitch it to a couple uh, companies, and they ended up thinking it was too abstract for their tastes. Uh, so Kickstarter uh, was the way to go, because I was getting so much great feedback from the fans who had bought the game off the Game Crafter. So it, it simply made sense to go straight to Kickstarter and let the fans Okay, so the version that's getting kickstarted is this the is this an improved version of what you originally uh, had on GameCrafter? Is this an improved you know is this just that version with a couple extra you know improved components? Yeah, uh, the the version that I put on the GameCrafter was really sort of a basic version and and kind of a, a almost like a beta version. And I I put it out and people loved the beta version so much, but they gave me this feedback about uh, I want a better board. Uh, I want more pieces, and I, I want more artwork, and, and that's exactly what I am delivering. There are six, uh, there are five explorers in the first uh, version of migration that I put out there that people loved, and there are six additional explorers, that is, six additional new abilities uh, in, in the newer version. It also uh, includes punch board mats that can be recompose to create a new map every time there are seriously millions and millions of possibilities for how to make these maps. There are more terrain modifiers that make the maps even more customizable. Um, and if we reach the $25,000 stretch goal, we'll end up with uh, a lot of different modes to play, including advanced and tournament-ready play, like uh, draft or uh, random ban that we're looking into. Okay. And it's kind of got some interesting fluff behind it. Um, and why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Because it's kind of cool. Well, when I'm when I'm designing games, I often use animals as uh, as as symbolism to help me remember what the abilities are. Because animals have their own distinct character. Um, as I was developing the game, the animal thing kind of stuck around, and I I wanted to make it work. So I came up with this kind of animals uh, exploring uh, the new world uh, in, in this, this renaissance fantasy era uh, where animals are people and, and people don't exist. Um, and it's, it's kind of exciting. The game never really explicitly says it anywhere, but it's exploring uh, American history as uh, people are coming over from the old world and trying to start over, trying to claim land and, and make something. Um, the game actually takes place over uh, a few hundred years of in-game time, and each time you establish a town, that's a, a, a new generation that's uh, taking place. So uh, the first 
the first set that I released is about that initial contact with the new world, uh, grabbing that land and establishing those towns. Um, and the second book that I've released is about conflict with native populations uh, or uh, you know allegiance or things like that. And it intru introduces a lot of abilities that are much more uh, aggressive or manipulative um, or, or controlling. Uh, they, it ends up giving more more ways to play and breaks a lot of the strategies that were dominant in the original set. Okay, that's that's really cool. That's actually kind of kind of unique. Um, so this is your first Kickstarter that you've done, right? This is your first project that you've brought out. Yeah, this is the first Kickstarter I've ever done. It's it's a really small team. It's me and my college roommate, uh, and we've been you know talking about doing something to uh, you know change the world or uh, put our ideas into reality. And this is this is the first time we've figured out how to do it. Um, I'm I'm a writer and a teacher professionally. Uh, and a game designer as my as my hobby. Uh, my artist is a prop designer and illustrator, and all of the rest of it, all the the publishing and the talking to factories and how to promote and how to manage uh, a project and how to talk to people who are happy with you or frustrated with you. All of that stuff uh, I've had to learn as I go, and it's been a very exciting ride. Yeah, it's, I've talked to a couple people that have done, you know, I've talked to people that have done one project and that was it. They had, you know, they, they had their Kickstarter experience and, and they're kind of done with it. And we've talked to, to other designers where this, you know, where they're on their third and fourth Kickstarter project and, and they want to keep going because they've got so many more ideas and things that they want to expand. Is, is it, which way do you think it's going for you at this point? Uh, you know, there's there's definitely been um, a lot of difficulty with this Kickstarter because I'm learning everything for the first time. Uh, but that really convinces me that the next time would be easier. Um, Migration is not the only game idea that I have. It's just the game idea that I've been refining over the last couple of years and really putting a lot of other fantastic ideas on the back burner. Um, it, it really depends on the public response. Uh, which has, of course, been positive and overwhelming. Uh, I'm really grateful to all my fans. Um, but it also depends on the professional response. Uh, if this ends up being a, um, you know, something that gets picked up by another company uh, and, and they're interested in, in new games, maybe I would go uh, to them directly in, in the future. But if, if it's something that develops a great community and a, a great fan base, then certainly I'd be putting more Kickstarters out in the future. Uh, I, I, have a, I have a positive reaction to Kickstarter overall. It's been fantastic, and, and I'd love to have this experience again. So I've been, uh, since I, I initially contacted you about talking to you, I've been checking your page every once in a while, and your, your project funded uh, a couple, some time ago. Um, was that a surprise to you, how, how well people took to it, or were you kind of expecting it to just do well? You know, I think when you when you think about a project like this, um, you obviously I love it. Um, my friends have given me uh, all positive feedback, but you can't always trust them. Um, I've I've had lots of people who bought the game on kick on on the Game Crafter give me fantastic feedback and really want to engage with uh, the project. Um, so so I I had positive feelings going into this, but anytime you put yourself out there, it's uh, it's it's something where you have mixed possibilities. Um, I I had a, a mixture of tremendous hopes and and you know dread and this is uh, every day there's there's a little bit of that. Sometimes people back out of the project and sometimes um, I have a you know thirteen hundred dollar day in the middle of the project. So um, I think when I saw my first uh, five thousand dollar day, I said you know I think this is going to back. Um, or this is going to fund. Um, it, it was just a matter of when. But now we're in this uh, very exciting, very interesting phase where we're between 15,000, which was what I needed, and uh, 25,000, which is the, the stretch goal that everyone's really excited about. And it's a question of whether we'll be able to get there. Now, being so successful, if you do reach that that twenty thousand dollar goal, or if you go beyond, I mean, you've got I believe eight days left on it, and you, it's always a possibility that you could go well beyond that, just given the amount of time and 
just the way the Kickstarter works sometimes. But do you foresee any problems with production if you get too too much funding almost? Um, you know, I've been reading a lot of articles about that. Um, projects that overfund uh, tend to stuff their box with extras and um, it, it makes things challenging in the future. Um, I, I don't predict that I'll overfund to uh, a, a degree where that would be a challenge. Uh, I also think very carefully about what I'm including in my box um, and how much of a strain that's going to put on my artist. Uh, so I, I, I don't think that will happen. But again, this is the first time I'm going through a Kickstarter. I'm trying to look forward as, as much as I can and read articles of people who have gone ahead of me. But there's really nothing like the experience of running it for yourself. Yeah, there, there's a ton of lessons learned out there. There's also a ton of horror stories where you're like, ugh. But, <laughs> I read a few. I, I, yeah, I think one of the, the things, I don't know if you're going to agree with this or not, but one of the areas where people seem to have problems with when they fund or they overfund or, or with established companies because they want to do so much extra that yeah. they don't they don't counter, they don't factor in the time, that, that the extra time that it's going to take for them to make and reach these goals. And, and I think it's it's a lot of established companies that are already set that they get and meet their stretch goals that they don't account for all these extra things. And these established companies, I backed one that I actually, uh, my gaming group actually backed a large portion of it. Um, mm. And we're still waiting on PDFs more than a year later for, for a rule book that's supposed to be printed six months ago. Wow. Because of all the add-ons and all the extra stuff that they threw in that now, you know, they just recently started contacting people saying, oh, you're going to get your PDFs in a week. Well, yeah, that that sounds really frustrating, and that's not the experience that I want people to have backing migration, especially because I'd love to run Kickstarters in the future, and I'd like to be a, you know, a trusted person. Uh, as, as a member of a two-man team, I'm acutely aware of how much time everything takes. Uh, so I, you know, again, that's that's part of why I'm I'm putting so much attention into exactly what I promise. So, um, you know, this is this. Is all, I always kind of I'm curious about this. If you do manage to go beyond your 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 twenty thousand dollar mark that you've kind of now set for yourself, um, mm -hmm. are you going to upgrade any of the components or or anything or just um, kind of an extra? This is kind of a funny question because uh, I. I kind of did things contrary to the way Kickstarter uh, really expects. Um, it, as I'm looking at a lot of Kickstarters, they they seem to kind of want you to put down a $5,000 goal with a, a bunch of components um, that you don't actually like, and then uh, you know upgrade the components as you get toward your actual goal of what you wanted the game to be like in the first place. And that's not really what I did with Migration. I, I decided what what pieces I wanted um, and uh, kind of set the goal there. There was a, a, a wooden goals or wooden wooden pieces goal um, that ended up getting adjusted to the twenty thousand. But other than that, there are a lot of uh, amazing components to this box that um, you know that that I said I, I, I didn't want to compromise. For example, it it ends up opening like a book. You know, there's there's a magnet that holds it on the side and. Uh, it opens up like this, and I thought that was a, a, an amazing experience for a, a, a storytelling type of game. Um, these these books are supposed to be, uh, you know, anthologies of stories that are passed down from generation to generation, and, and that held up the theme so much that it had to be part of the game. I also could have started with uh, punch board uh, tokens as as the pieces and made it a you know four thousand dollar goal, but I thought punch board pieces would really compromise the feeling of importance. Uh, that you get when you're playing the game, and that's not uh, that's not a migration that I wanted to print. I figured if they if they didn't want to fund at least the plastic pieces, then maybe migration you know shouldn't exist. Maybe there wasn't a fan base for it. Um, so I I don't really have plans to upgrade uh, the the pieces after that. Uh, but um, you know things could change. The way I'm I'm running migration, I'm trying to make it a very uh, flexible campaign, uh, and when people say, hey, you should be doing this or you should be doing that, I, I try to test the water and see what the feelings are. And uh, there, whenever uh, you know, there's something that I need to stand firm on, I, I do that. But 
if there's something that it, it seems the public uh, wants, then I'm absolutely happy to include that. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've I've kind of been scrolling back and forth um, is is I keep going back to the artwork that mm -hmm. that is in this game that is a part of it just as the base set. Um, Matt Jones is your artist, right? That's right. Yeah. And and his style is it's phenomenal. It, it's it kind of it's all consistent. It, it it all kind of blends very nicely. All the different characters. There, there's a definite continuity to it. Did you have a lot to do with his art choices, or did you kind of just kind of give him a blank check with with his creativity? That's a great question. Um, there's actually a, a thread on the comments right now that addresses this. Um, he he's uh, you know starting to address the community as well. Um, he and I uh, are, are both artists, um, but he's more professionally an artist, and I'm more conceptually uh, an artist. So uh, for each of these pieces, um, their, their image really came from the character that, that the, the piece feels like as you're playing them. Uh, for example, the Sparrow, um, he has sort of a, he, he has the only aggressive effect in the first book. Um, he, he's the only one who can remove other towns by kind of jumping over them. Um, so I wanted him to kind of have a military personality. But also, as you continue playing the game with the Sparrow, uh, people tend to learn how to defend against him, and they make different moves knowing that the other person is holding a Sparrow in their hand. Um, and in that way, he ended up being kind of like uh, a police officer, sort of enforcing the rules of movement and punishing people who, who didn't follow those rules, who stepped out of line. So um, I, I went to him with a sketch of what I wanted the Sparrow to look like, uh, and I, I said, you know, I want him to look like the, a, a proud, strong individual who is ambiguously between um, military and, and law enforcement. Uh, and, you know, we, we spend hours with him illustrating and me uh, watching over Google, Google Hangouts um, and um, telling him to make adjustments. You know, let's let's put a storm in the background. Let's give him yellow buttons or uh, whatever it is. And we uh, we talk a lot about uh, the symbolism and the character that's coming forward. Yeah, I mean, the, the Sparrow definitely has that 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 kind of quasi-military police state kind of look about him, and he, he's got that proud stance with his mm -hmm. his head up in the air and. And then you've got another character that I'm, I'm kind of looking at this as we're talking, and it's uh, the Bass Navigates, and, and he's kind of a, a Benjamin Franklin almost looking character. Mm -hmm. And and all the artwork, guys, I, I'm going to tell you, is definitely, uh, it's very appealing, and, and it goes with a lot of the components kind of all have this really good uh, blending and, and this flow that just carries into one another that, that's kind of awesome. You don't see that with a lot of games, you know, where... where They've got different artists working on different things, or, or, you know, they've got a graphic artist working on the box art, and they've got a, a, an actual artist working on some of the components, and so some of the things don't match as well. Mm -hmm. But, but it, it, you can see the care that you guys took in, in designing this and putting it together. Yeah, we really wanted to create uh, sort of a united uh, message, and uh, each migration box, we really wanted it to be a, um, a, a whole experience, right? A whole Oh, sorry, Joe. I accidentally uh, hit something. Hold on. Did that fix it? There we go. Sorry about that. Is that better? Yeah, I, I was getting some feedback from someone else. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so uh, let's see. Um, each each box, I really wanted it to be a whole experience. I didn't want the the game to start after you open the box and set up all the pieces, and then you look at it and say, okay, this is migration. I wanted it to, to start when you have the box in your hands. And uh, the, the whole experience of holding that is like, uh, oh, there's a story kind of that comes with the, the game that has to do with um, a storybook getting passed down to uh, a young person learning about his history. And, and this is sort of meant to be that book. And so as you open that book, you're participating in that history. And so the experience starts as you have the book in your hands. 
Yeah, and, and you kind of get that feeling of it. I mean, just looking at the components that, that I'm seeing. Um, one of the things that's kind of cool that I had noticed before, and I was going to email you about it and I kind of forgot, was uh, you, you, you let people vote on a lot of things. So you quite literally crowdsource this from, from one end to the other almost mm -hmm. as soon as, you know, um, you know, as far as components go and, and doing the Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, I. I let. I. Every time uh, someone someone new backs uh, migration, I send them a message, and in that message somewhere it says, "Welcome to the migration community." Um, and part of what's exciting about migration is that it's a collaborative effort. Um, I have a vision for the game, but I'm not the only migration player out there, and I'm not even the only migration creator out there. Um, in the comments and on the board game geek forums. Uh, people have independently uh, initiated an effort to create more uh, migration explorers. It's, it's actually really exciting as a creator to see so many people engaging with the material uh, at, a, at a homebrew level. Um, it, it, the, one of the purposes of creating migration uh, was to create something that inspires creativity uh, and curiosity, and uh, I love seeing people try to make the world bigger. That makes me very excited. Yeah, that's that's definitely cool and very admirable. Um are are you guys gonna be doing any my my, my club that I'm with on uh we, we do a lot of conventions and we have found that, that one of the, the best ways to get non gamers into gaming is to go to places where gamers aren't. Mm -hmm. We go to we go to we go to all the game you know, we go to Strategicon, um we go to their conventions throughout the year. We go to um <clears throat> Uh, Kingdom Con down in San Diego, you know, so we, we attend a variety of gaming conventions locally and throughout the Southern California area, but we have found that our biggest efforts or, or our biggest successes are actually at non-gaming events like uh, mm -hmm. WonderCon, Anime Expo, uh, Anime LA, we go, you know, we hit all these different varying events, we go to many steampunk conventions uh, throughout the year. Uh, so basically we go to so many events to promote so many different games and just get non-gamers into the gaming you know, into the gaming world, you know, be it board games, miniatures games, RPGs, um, you know, we play a plethora of games, and our greatest successes are with non-gamers, getting them into new games, and learning that. Are a lot of your people established gamers, or...? or... You know, I really have a mix, and uh, one of my goals in creating Migration was creating something that's available to casual gamers, um, but interesting to uh, serious gamers, and that that's a serious challenge, of course, uh, but you know I've had kids as young as four or six play migration successfully, understanding what the rules are, and um, you know my gaming gaming group regularly wants to play migration, you know, ten games in a row, uh, trying to get the tactical upper hand. Um, so it, the the rules are simple. Each piece you can understand it in one or two sentences. That's one of the impositions I put on myself. Um, and uh, the, there's a limited number of pieces that are all important, um, but they also are all tactically viable. They're all uh, useful in their own uh, particular situations, um, and there are a lot of combinations and synergies and strategies uh, that are kind of hidden within the rules that people discover over time. Um, a lot of my early gaming experiences the most exciting ones had to do with finding those secret tactics, um, looking at beautiful artwork, and uh, you know, exploring a, a game with great curiosity. Uh, that's that all went into migration. Yeah, that, that's it, it's a lot of passion that you guys put behind it. Um, mm -hmm. w will you be attending any events this year or next year, possibly? I I, I am often getting the feedback that I should be joining conventions and attending conventions. <laughs> Um, I've, I haven't ever been to a convention like that, uh, and I'd love to go, but it always seems like they're happening, uh, or I, I hear about them after all the tickets have already been sold out. Um, that's definitely something I would be interested in doing, but I don't have uh, plans to do that at this time. Okay, that's cool. Well, um, you know, if you ever wanna, want to try and get into Strategic Con, uh, you can always let me know. Um, I've been doing game demos there for the last couple of years and my club has been doing miniatures gaming there for the last three years okay. and and you know I just recently held a, a tournament for uh, 
Boss Monster, which I think was the first tournament that they didn't actually, the company didn't hold themselves at, at the last event. So mm -hmm. um, we have pretty good communication with their, their board game people and, and the miniatures department and all these different groups that are there. So, okay, you know, we can always get you the name of the person you need to talk to. <laughs> well, that would be great. I'll, uh, I'll message you about that after the interview. Yeah. Um, let's see. So... Um, what do you think will be your your time frame for delivery once this this is over in eight days? Um, I'm aiming for August. My um, my factory asks for uh, you know two or three months. Let me see. I have to start doing math right now. Um, March, uh, April, May, June, uh, and if I give a month for delivery, that gives me. Uh, a, a month to complete the artwork um, and you know finish up the manual uh, so that that ends up working out really well for my time frame okay. um, and that's that's with the you know the longest possible manufacturing time yeah well you know manufacturing is, is just the part of it but a lot of people especially when you're getting the stuff shipped in from China it's people sure. forget that their stuff will get locked into customs <laughs> yeah and you know I I'm hoping that that doesn't uh, take any uh, extra amount of time, but there there's some elements of uh, shipping and things like that that I don't have control over that I really wish that I did. Um, on the subject of shipping, the, the game migration will definitely be EU-friendly. It took me a while to set that up, but that's certainly confirmed at this point. Okay, cool. So you got in a cu couple months, or basically the end of the summer, you guys are going to be sitting in your living room slapping addresses on boxes and um, actually, I'll be using uh, the fulfillment company Ship Naked uh, for a lot of that, um, and I'll send them the address list and, and what the orders are, uh, and that will facilitate the bulk of the orders. Um, as far as add-ons go, I will be stuffing the add-ons into the boxes themselves for uh, the people in the United States who uh, bought add-ons, because that works out the best. That's sure. actually really a lot of people skip that. They they forget to, to kind of third party that that fulfillment part mm -hmm. of it, and they try and do it for themselves. And that's where a lot of people stumble and, and they get frustrated. That's that's one of the things that I learned uh, reading so many Kickstarter blogs um, and success stories and failure stories. Uh, and one of the questions that really stood out to me was, "Do you want to design games or do you want to stuff envelopes?" Um, and it's it's really a question of one or the other at one point. Uh, so yeah. take a, a hit of a couple dollars to have someone else handle that who's much more skilled. That's a good way to end a friendship too. Is is stuffing boxes together. Yeah, I I can agree with that. So um, now as far as the the artwork goes, and and going back to that a little bit, um, is there any chance or any opportunity if if you do kind of go over that stretch goal that you have set for yourself now, the 20,000, mm -hmm. of maybe getting the larger prints of some of the artwork is, is kind of add-ons or stretch goals since the art's done, you know? I, I think that's a fair question, and that's something that I got a lot. You know, a lot of people said, I love a poster or uh, I love a T-shirt. Um, and I, I thought about that for a long time, and it kind of goes back to the question you just asked. Um, I, I want to, you know, create board games and, you know, maybe after the campaign's over, I'll, I'll create a Zazzle account and put some t-shirts up for sale, but I don't want to be uh, stuffing those boxes in my house, even it gives me um, an extra 15 bucks here and there as, as add-ons. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, so I think we are hitting just under the 20 minute mark. Uh, you know, I want to thank you for, for taking the time to talk to us and, and letting us in on, on your Kickstarter and, and the things that went on behind the scenes and kind of where you're at now. Yeah. Um, and maybe in a couple of weeks, you know, we'll, we'll check in with you and see where you're at. Um, any final thoughts? Um, well, I, it's, it's been a wild ride. It's been very, very exciting and very emotional to see, uh, you know, everyone have such an amazing response to migration. Uh, it means a lot to me. Um, and it's great to have people like you uh, reach out and uh, ask for an interview and uh, help spread the word. So I'm, I'm very excited to be a part of this project, and I'm at the head of uh, an amazing community that's come together. So I'm, I'm very proud to be where I am right now. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, and I want to thank you, and, and I just want to let you know, you know, one of our club's things, one of the reasons that I'm revamping my channel, kind of doing this outreach, is I want to get the local developers and creators, you know, get want to get, let people know where you guys are at, and, and you're in California, you're in Mountain View, right? That's right. Yeah, and I'm in, in Orange County, so mm -hmm. so that's actually not too far away from each other. Absolutely. And, Organic. Yeah, and finding out that somebody so local is doing something so cool is is amazing for me. And I just want people to know that that in the community locally, there's people like you that are doing these wonderful things and and bringing these wonderful projects to fruition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I mean it's very exciting. We we live in an age. Uh, I mean the the very existence of Kickstarter is a total game changer. Um, it it's no longer necessary for you to have a rich uncle. Or um, a an endorsement from a company for you to make something, uh, and, and and there's not the same risk either. You you make an idea and you say, what do you guys think? What does the community think? Do you want this to exist? And when the community says no, then it wasn't a good idea. And when the community says yes, then uh, you know that it was all worth it. And and I'm really really glad to be a, a part of uh, somewhere where I, ideas can rule instead of money. Yeah, and, and a good uh, a friend of mine had re has been saying for a long time that this is the golden age of gaming. Mm -hmm. we, we we are in an area where Kickstarter's around, 3D printers are small enough to put in your house, laser yeah. cutters are small enough to put in your house, where, where we have guys making components in their garages. Mm -hmm. It's very, very exciting to be part of this uh, time period. Well, thanks for your time, Joe, and we're going to go ahead and sign off, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and hope to see you on the next one. All right, see you, Billy. All right.